Someone asked, can you talk a little bit about instant gratification and delayed gratification? Could this be similar to you and Brennan's wealthy now and wealthy later strategy? I have a pattern of pulling from my savings to buy things. Even though I always have enough money for my bills and expenses, I still seem to pull from my savings for things that I want. I can't seem to get past this. Thank you for your insights. Okay. I have an interesting answer for this, an interesting perspective. So first, I'm curious, and this goes for everyone in here, of course, I do my best to apply every question to as many people as possible. Are you the kind of person that likes to be told that you can't do something or you can't have something or you can't touch something? I don't know about you, but for me, when you tell me I can't do something or I can't touch something or I can't have something or I can't be something, it makes me want it so much more. It literally puts me into a rebellion energy. For many people, how they're approaching money and how they're approaching everything in life, but let's talk about money here, is from using, you know, society's definitions of things, of finances, for example, like debt is bad. Savings account is for emergencies. You know what I mean? Like, do not touch this. Touch this instead. Do this. And it's just like, for people who value freedom and for people who value like doing whatever the fuck they want, this doesn't work for them. And when they try to follow this generic advice or generic way of labeling things, it just makes them rebel. And they rebel so hard that they go further into debt, that they attract emergencies for their emergency fund, and then they end up spending all of their savings. You can't touch this. Oh yeah. Watch me. Right. So it's like abstinence, you know, like don't do drugs, don't have sex. Well, it makes me want to do it more, you know, like every, ever said every teenager ever when they're told that they can't do something or something's bad, they're like, oh, it makes me want it more. So I encourage anyone who's struggling with this, especially the person who asked this. And again, it came through the email inbox. So I don't know who asked this, but Um, You're probably, first of all, not an I can't kind of person. And I encourage you to give meaning, uh, give a new meaning to money. So how I see money, how I see my finances is I can do and have whatever the fuck I want, period, end of story. If I wanted to, you have to, you have to tell yourself, like, if I can touch my money as much as I want, I can do whatever I want with my money. Because when you're in this energy, when you're truly embodying this energy, you actually have less and less of a need to touch the money that you're intending for your future self. When you create a meaning of everything is accessible to me, then you're like, I don't feel this draw, this need, this attachment to my money anymore. I know that I have full freedom with it. And so I can then give myself the space to intend something for my future self. When you realize that you and your future self are one being together, you're not separate from your future self. I think that there, this separation between you and your future self causes you this disconnect and this discord and dis-ease. And it just feels like a constant fight and a battle between you and your future self. So the concept of wealthy now and wealthy later, how I see it is it's all happening at once. We are all one being and we're no longer taking from one another because it feels like this rebellion act of I'm going to take from my future self right now. Like, ah, oh, fuck you. I, I want this now. And when you realize that time is just an illusion and you can have whatever you want, whenever you want, then you're like, you know what? It feels really good for me to put this into an account that I'm not seeing as untouchable. I'm just seeing it as an opportunity fund for X, Y, Z. And when you're in that space, what you end up doing is you end up manifesting more for the now. And you're also manifesting more for the later. When you're stuck in this box of limitation, you end up restricting how much money can flow in 
for these different categories. But when you're realizing that you're in partnership with your future self, all of a sudden you end up manifesting money for an account. And I recommend doing this. I recommend you just because this seems to work for most people. Like I recommend you create an account for it is technically a savings, but you're not calling it a savings account because that's fucking boring. You're calling in opportunities for the future fund, right? Or you can create an investment account and call that. Um, again, my husband is way more of an expert in all of this. It's been a while since I've managed our money. I have delegated that to him. So I just purely focus on manifesting the money, but I used to do it all. And I had um, a percentages that I would dedicate simply to spending money because I didn't want to be restricted. I didn't want to be told no. And so I literally created a percentage of my income that I had to spend, not like had to, but it, I would be encouraged to spend it. I would be encouraged to circulate it. I'd be like, you know what? This $200 is just for you to spend, Kevin. What do you want to go buy? And then I don't feel limited anymore. And then I feel excited about using the rest of my finances to pay off the debt, to put it into an investment account, to put it into a savings account or whatever the fuck it is, to pay for my expenses, to pay for my bills, all these things. It just feels like an all-encompassing abundance of money rather than creating these pockets and containers of limitation. Do you see the the vibe here? It's very energetic. I see money as very energetic. We can get into the 3D and I'm not the person to talk about the 3D. I'm not the person to tell you how to manage your money and all these all this terminology. I'm strictly speaking from the energy. What I can help you with is transform your relationship with the energy of the money. And when you transform your relationship with the energy of money, all of a sudden you have more to play with. And then you can get into the shits and giggles of you know, where do I, what do I do with it? How do I invest in it? How do I invest it? What do I buy with it? And all that stuff. This is how I solve my binging addiction on food. Yes. Also applies to food. Actually, you bring up a really good point, Caitlin, because I also practice that with food too. I tell myself that I can eat whatever I want. When you tell yourself you can't eat something, holy shit, you want it so much more. It's like, I can eat whatever the fuck I want. And then it really makes you go into like a higher level of consciousness of really embodying the version of yourself that is, that feels her best. And then you ask yourself like, what? I can have anything and everything, but what do I really want? And you realize I want to feel my best. What foods align with that? I call my savings the abundance fund. I love that. Use whatever language and word that gets you jazzed about money.